très troublant et euh, il parle bon, surtout du thème de, de la, des ghettos à New York. Euh, je voudrais savoir si vous croyez que c'est possible de vivre dans, euh, de façon vraiment intégrée, que toutes les communautés puissent être intégrées à New York, euh, dans différents quartiers, parce que votre film pose la question, il n'y répond pas à la fin. Et c'est vrai que c'est très inquiétant, c'est très troublant. Enfin, moi, je, je trouve que votre film est, pose un constat très, très négatif, enfin très pessimiste peut-être sur l'avenir. Et euh, je ne sais pas, je voudrais que vous me répondiez à cette question. Est-ce que vous croyez vraiment que l'intéressalité peut se vivre à New York Est-ce que c'est possible Est-ce que vous y croyez à ça On dirait que c'est presque un rêve, ou du moins un idéal. Well, I don't think that we should just really hone in on New York City. This film is not about just New York City. This film is about the world. Racism is not, I mean, I think it'd be a mistake if we sit here in the south of France and look at this film, and as you, most of you being European journalists, saying that racism is something that, is just, that just pertains to America. And there's no racism here in France that Algerians and Africans are treated like everybody else, which we know is not the truth. That Indians and Pakistanis and West Indians in England are treated like everybody else which we know is not the truth. So don't just stick this on America. It's not just about Bedford-Stuyvesant, it's not just about Brooklyn, it's not just about New York or America, it's about the world. Racism is all over the world. I don't think it's a very pessimistic film. I think that at the end, there is Hope, I mean, I believe that. Uh, another thing is that you cannot come to any, any one of my, I, I wouldn't go to any movie expecting to have an answer for AIDS, for cancer, for racism. What makes you think that filmmakers are gods or Jesus Christ, what, what makes you think that I'm the savior and I'm gonna have a, an answer for racism, something that's been plaguing us since man has been around? I don't have the answer. I think the problem, I mean, what we wanted to do, my agenda, what I feel what I have to do as a filmmaker is present problems so that the discussion can start. Because you have people in America who still say that racism ended when Lyndon B. Johnson signed these civil rights acts and black people allowed to vote. And because Michael Jackson is the number one rock star, along with Prince, And Eddie Murphy is the biggest box office draw in the world. And Big, Bill Cosby is the number one TV star along with Oprah, M Oprah Winfrey. And Mike Tyson is the world heavyweight champion. And Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player in the world. The black people have arrived and everything is all right. But it's not. The black underclass in America now is larger than it's ever been. So you can't be lulled to sleep just because Eddie Murphy is huge in Arsenio Hall That's a great show. <laughs> that, that we are living in a world where everything is right and is righteous and, ju and uh, humane. Monsieur? Uh, Monsieur Spike Lee, je crois, je crois aussi que votre film uh, chante l'espoir, mais est-ce que vous n'avez pas l'impression d'avoir complètement gommé un problème qui est celui de la drogue? That's a good question, and I was hoping somebody would say that. This film is not about drugs. This film takes place within a 24-hour day period on the hottest day of the summer in New York City. The film is about people and racism. Now, I think that's a great point, what Ozzie Davis talked about, about Bedford Stuyvesant being one of these quote-unquote pathological neighborhoods of of deranged black people. Because when you say Bedford Stuyvesant, when you say Harlem, Chicago South Side, Watts, automatically white America thinks of rapists, murders, drug addicts, killers, all that stuff. Drugs is in every level of society today in America. How many of you journalists would go saw working girls, a rain man, and questioned where are the drugs? Nobody. But the minute that we have a black film that takes place in the ghetto, people want to know where the drugs are. Because automatically, they think that when you have a film about black people, you're going to have drugs, you're going to have rapists, 
You have people being killed, violence, because that's the way you think of black people. I mean, let's be honest. Those are the images that you've been led to believe that, that we are as a people. Madam? <clears throat> that was actually going to be my question, and it seems a glaring omission uh, not to have the drugs. And if you made this movie in, uh, in Washington, D.C., in that neighborhood, I don't see how you could have left them out. But you have to realize that, once again, that this film is not about drugs. Drugs is such a big issue that you have to do an entire film about drugs. To have a subplot of drugs would be a disservice to the film. This film, racism is big enough for one film in itself. In fact, we could have 50 more films about racism. You talk about racism in the music industry, mm -hmm. racism in sports, in corporate America. So let's, not, let's just talk about the movie that you saw, not about what the movie wasn't about. Well, the word one, that this, was, this was your idea, what you just said. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the film on, on drugs, do you plan ever to make it? Yes. <laughs> OK. The gentleman of Monsieur Labar, Mr. Ebert. My question is already asked. OK. Monsieur? Uh, I wanted to ask why Moki uh, picks up the money which he uh, first wanted to g uh, give back to uh, sell, the 200 bucks, I think. Mookie picks up the money. The reason why I threw back the money was a, ma a matter of pride. Then there's a stalemate. And this is something that I had various discussions with executives at Universal about. They thought that it would make Mookie more heroic, a higher he would have higher morals if he left the money there on the sidewalk. I felt that that would be untrue. I think that no young black kid in New York City, not especially when he knew his job is gone, Sal's been burnt down to the ground. At that point in the movie, Mookie has decided that he has to be a better person, that he has to be a better father for his kid. And there was $200 laying there on the sidewalk, and he scooped it up. 200 bucks is 200 bucks. True. Monsieur? Patrick, Patrick Alexandre, Le Drapeau Rouge. Je suppose que si vous avez choisi un acteur connu comme John Savage pour un rôle aussi bref, c'est que vous vouliez aussi qu'il représente quelque chose de caractéristique. Vous pouvez parler de ce rôle? Yes. Uh, John Savage really his part had to do about gentrification. Gentrification is happening all over the United States. During the late 60s, early 70s, you had a phenomenon called white flight, where white people in droves left the inner city to move in the suburbs, to move away from crazy black folks, to move away from drugs, to move away from crime, into the utopia of the suburbs. What they found out is that without black people following them, crime still followed them, drugs still followed them, and they got tired of commuting two hours into the city <laughs> every day. So what you have going on all over the United States is a reclaiming of the inner cities and it's really set up by the real estate companies, developers, where pe black people are being tricked, not all the time, but a lot of times they're being tricked into selling their homes for a price that is too low, and we're really being displaced. So systematically, the cities are being taken over once again, and black people being moved out to the suburbs, way, way out in the suburbs. So that's what the character John Savage plays. He's a, a young man, a white homesteader, who is tired of paying of the exorbitant rents in Manhattan. And he wants to own a home, and only affordable homes that are good or in black neighborhoods now, neighborhoods which, like I live in, in Fort Greene. We have, Brooklyn has some of the best brownstones 
in New York City. And when my parents bought our home, it was 1969, it was a predominantly black neighborhood. Then you could buy, if you bought a house for like $75,000. Now if you want to buy a brownstone in Fort Greene, it costs $400,000. And the neighborhood now is half white. Young white professionals are buying all these homes. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.